Hey everyone, this is Chris, but my friends call me Stones. Thanks for checking out my channel. Thanks for checking out my video. It's a beautiful day here in Ohio. Weather's finally clearing up. I actually drove around today, today's Thursday, and looked for yard sales. I actually found a couple last weekend. I uh, didn't find any today, but I'm hoping to find some uh, on Friday and Saturday. But I uh, wanted to record this video really quick. Um, I uh, went to the Goodwill Outlet on yesterday. I go there every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I stay for a couple of rotations of the bins, sometimes as many as three. This time I stayed for two, spent a total of $28 that time, came home, ate lunch, did some other things, realized one of the items that I had had value to it but was missing a piece. So I actually went back to the outlet hoping to find it. I didn't find it but I did buy about $10 of other th items. So it was a really good day, just had a really good time, had some fun, um, and, um, and the beautiful weather just added to it. So wanted to show you some of these things, explain why I pick it up. I've talked about some of these things before, starting off with some miscellaneous like figures and toys and things like that. Um, these here, I forgot exactly what the name is. It's like Little Beverly Hills family or something like that. It was it was something different than I've never heard of these before But I had seen a few Saw a few more decided to grab them up put them together. There's probably about $25 right there um, Transformers I pick up these easy transforming or easy step um, Easy action transformers whatever they're called whenever I find them I pick them up and I lot those up as well um, I've talked about Happy Meal toys before. I pick those up if they're still sealed, brand new. I just recently got, uh, finally hit 200 of them. So what I do is I throw them in a big bin in my basement. And once I reach 200, I list them for $175 free shipping. And I think my cost of goods and fees and stuff like that, I basically make about $100 after all, all is said and done. I find quite a few of these, but it takes a while to find 200. Uh, it takes me about six months or so, I think is about the timing on that. So it's just simple, something that's simple, that's easy. It's, it, it's no, there's no thought process behind it and you can make some good money. Uh, I for, has, when I grabbed these, I forgot that I already hit 200 and I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to go through that process again, but why not? It's pretty easy. Uh, a couple of miscellaneous action figures. Pez, I've talked about these before. I picked these up new and used, and I sell uh, a, lots of 100 for about $75 with free shipping, but I think the cost of goods is less than $15, so after shipping and everything, I could probably make about $50 or so. Um, and Pez are plentiful. Um, you can find them quite a bit in the bins. People don't want them. Uh, Paw Patrol, same thing. I pick those up, lot them up. Uh, once I get about 20 to 30, um, I put them up. Um, and I get about a buck a piece for them, free shipping. So maybe a lot of 40 of them will sell for $40 free shipping. Um, I pick up other miscellaneous figures. Uh, here's Lion King, some Bakugan. Again, I lot those up once I get a bunch of those. Uh, Polly Pocket, I just sold a big lot of those, especially the uh, Disney's Princess ones, which is what this one is. Uh, they sell really well. I sell, you know, I can only, I only need like eight of them, and they sell for about $40. Uh, the, the tool on the left is from um, Handy Manny. His tools actually have value because kids lose those all the time, so parents are looking for the replacement tools. His actually smaller ones, which is what that one is, sell better than the bigger ones. Um, they do really well. I've talked about Octonauts before. That's one of the, um, one of the critters, whatever they're called. Um, here we've got some Imaginext and Marvel um, superheroes. Now, a lot of people confuse the Marvel ones with Imaginext, but Imaginext doesn't have a license with Disney or Marvel. They have licenses with other companies like DC, uh, Power Rangers, um, some other licenses and stuff like that. The Marvel ones can have good value, uh, surprisingly enough. There are certain figures alone that can be worth 
$30, $40. Imagine X, not so much, but those seem to be more readily available. What I end up doing is I put big lots together of like just DC or just Batman or whatever, and those do really well. I've got the Batmobile there, I've got Robin Cycle, um, some Batman, some miscellaneous ones, and then the Marvel and uh, Disney ones as well. Um, in this box, I'm going to talk about this in a minute. This is actually some of the first stuff that I've found. Um, coming over here, I found an inflatable zebra. I just thought that was a lot of fun. Uh, here's the original uh, Stretch Armstrong. I was surprised someone left that in the bin. Um, I think they decided against it. Um, it's weird. Now, it, now it's fine. Like, when it gets hard, it, like, literally snaps inside there. You can hear, like, the pieces. They're brittle. Uh, but once they soften up, like in the sunlight and it warms up, it's fine. It's really weird. Um, here's something that I'm going to give a try because I'm always seeing these in the bins. Uh, Ryan's World figures. I'm always seeing these. I snatched them up. I already have a bunch more. I think I have enough to list them. I'm probably not going to get a whole lot for them. I'm probably going to be able to sell like 30 figures for maybe 20 bucks or something like that. Not a whole lot in that. But these will have some value. Thomas the Train always do well. These are the smaller ones. These are the die cast ones. I think there's a few plastic ones. I think these are the way these smaller ones are meant to be is that the uh, the engine itself, like Thomas, is die cast and, and then the cars are plastic. So I already have a bunch of these. I started grabbing these up earlier in the year and forgot that I was doing that. Probably passed up on a bunch of them. Then I saw a bunch of them on Wednesday, started grabbing those up, and I was like, oh yeah, I already started doing this, so let's continue it. So I think I have enough now. I probably could get about 50 bucks for these and the ones that I already have. I think I have like 10 more. Um, there we have a Pocket Fisherman. That actually sells for about $40. That alone might get all my money back, believe it or not. I was surprised on the value of that. There's a Disney album, nothing, not really worth much, maybe 10 bucks. This uh, King Kong is really cool, a uh, really big King Kong. This was actually passed off to several of the regulars at the Goodwill outlet. Um, there was an older guy that's always there. He found it first. He decided he didn't want it, handed it over to one of my buddies who kind of collects this type of stuff, action figures and, and, that, and the, the cool stuff. And uh, he decided he didn't want it because he already had one, so he handed it to me, and I definitely wanted it. Um, I'm probably going to keep it for myself. I don't know. Jurassic Park, I'm surprised this was passed on. This makes, uh, has, lights up and makes noises and it works. He's worth about 20 bucks. I already have a bunch of other Jurassic Park listed and I just keep on adding to the listing. I don't know if I want to add this one to it or sell it separately. We'll, I, I'm not sure yet. Uh, Power Ranger stuff. I always pick up Power Rangers um, stuff whenever I can. These are all the pieces for some sort of, um, um, combiner, um, maybe a Zord of another series. I'm only really familiar with uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. When it's something else, I can recognize that it's Power Rangers, but I don't know what series or what character or what vehicle or what Zord it is. Um, same thing with this. This is Power Rangers. I thought this was a Morpher, but it really isn't. It's part of a Power Rangers card game, and I've actually sold two of these before I realized that. And uh, our local Ollie's actually has the cards still, uh, cards for these still. So I might go over there, grab a couple packs, fool around with it, play with it, who knows. Um, here's something, we're going to come back to that later. This is the item that caused me to go back to the bins later on to find the missing part. Um, some media, sealed media. This was, came from the me returning. Um, they pulled they pushed out a huge bin of media, um, a lot of VHS, mostly VHS. And I collect sealed Disney stuff. Uh, so here's Flubber, which I don't have yet. Uh, the Lion King, which I think I have already in my collection. And then some other regular movies, Ransom with Mel Gibson, Terms of Endearment. Oh. And then Top Gun, this is my favorite find. Um, sealed copy of Top Gun. Not as worth, not as, not doesn't have as much value as I thought it was going to be, especially with the success of the new movie. It's worth about 25 bucks. Now, if you send it out and get it graded and it gets a good grade, you can ask for about 150, 175 dollars for that, but it's going to cost you at least 75 dollars to get it graded. 
Um, found this to be interested. Um, Mannheim Steamroller meets the mouse. Uh, Disney Mickey Mouse. Um, this is brand new sealed. Um, not worth a ton, maybe $15, $20 on that. So going back to some of the items that I said I was going to go back to is this piece right here. It's Santa Claus, Santa's Workshop. I forgot what the exact title of this was. But it's kind of funny because um, there are certain bins that I actually don't even pay attention to. My bins at my Goodwill, they separate things and they're pretty good about it. So I've watched videos of other resellers and them being at their Goodwill bins. And it seems like everything's just thrown into every bin. You could go to one bin, you could find shoes, you can find purses, you can find toys, you can find electronics, you can find media. It seems like it's not separated. Well, at my bins, they separate everything. They have specific bins that are assigned for spe specific type of items. So there's a whole section of bins d devoted to just soft goods, clothes, textiles, that type of stuff. There's bins that are uh, dedicated to just shoes, uh, boots, footwear, that type of stuff. Then they have bins that are de dedicated to just purses, tote bags, gym bags, um, book bags, and even luggage. And then they have like glassware and houseware and breakables and all this stuff. Most of those bins I don't go to. Um, I go to the other bins that can't kind of uh, have all this other type of stuff, the toys, the knickknacks, the media, the fun stuff. So I don't go where there's the decorations and the breakables and, and that type of stuff. Well, I was heading my, I was heading out for the day. I was going to leave for the day. And this was sitting in the box of household goods or, or breakables or whatever you want to call it. And it caught my eye. And I was like, that looks kind of cool. And I grabbed it and I looked at it and I started doing research on it. And the name on the bottom of this is Zims, 1996. And I looked up Zims, and they made a lot of nutcrackers. And some of their nutcrackers are cheap, and some of them have a lot of good value. It seems like the unique nutcrackers had value. So your common nutcracker didn't seem like it had any value, but uh, they had certain other ones that had certain themes, like a nutcracker of a... Salvation Arm, Army bell ringer, like the ones that used to, you know, the ones that sit in stores and ring the bell. That one had a lot of value. Um, they had a nutcracker of a watchmaker, like a like a watchmaker, really, um, and that had a lot of value. So I looked this one up, and I couldn't find anything like it. No listings whatsoever. I came home with it, did more research, found one past listing on Terrapeak, which is the history of eBay that goes back further than what you can find on your on the on the normal app. And there was one listing that sold for $110 plus shipping. But when I saw the photo, there was something missing on mine that that was on the one that I, I saw on eBay. And it's it's a it's a, a potbelly stove that sits behind Santa. And if you look really closely, that's the pedestal for the potbelly stove. Now, if I didn't see that picture, I'd, I wouldn't have known that. Um, I just assumed that was like a, um, like a stool or something like that. So given the rarity of this and the fact that the only one sold for $110, I'm doing my eBay math, my eBay logic, and I'm saying I have the only one. And so I'm going to raise the bar on the price, but because it's missing a piece, but that piece really isn't looking from it, looking at it from the front, you can't tell. Somebody, maybe somebody won't care. Other things that they could do is they could paint it to make it look like a stool, or they could completely remove it because it's only glued on there. So I would reduce the price for the missing part, but I would increase the price again for... Uh, the fact that it's rare and there's no other listings on eBay. So I went to that same price, basically $125 free shipping. Uh, we'll see what it does. Um, and this is what I went back for. I, I went back looking for that piece and I couldn't find it. Now let's go back to this box. Now this is a cool um, pencil box, hologram cover, if you can see right there. I thought that was cool to begin with. Now these weren't in there, I just put them in there for safekeeping for now. 
but this was actually the first things that I found in the bins that had already been rotated when I first showed up. So this wasn't a bin that came out and I got to it first and this is what I grabbed first. This was stuff that was sitting there that people left or overlooked or whatever. We've got an original G.I. Joe figures. Um, I don't remember the names of all of them. I think this one is um, Firefly and this one's Beachhead. And we've got some packs that I'll have to identify. Maybe they'll go with these guys, maybe they won't. Um, and then there's half guys, and these actually sell. People will buy these. Um, and the reason why I knew their original G.I. Joes is because I saw these first, and I've dealt with these before. Um, these are weapons for the vehicles, and I've, I've seen these weapons before because I've done a lot of research because I bought a collection before with a lot of weapons. Now, the other thing that's in here that's really cool now, this is a guy from Dino Riders. He's not really worth a whole lot, maybe five bucks. But these things right here, these things caught my eye. I said, man, these are really detailed for a little rubber figure. And I couldn't really read it at the time, but I could tell that there was some sort of copyright on the bottom. And typically, cheap knockoff stuff doesn't have copyright information on the bottom. And I came home and I did research, and what these are are called Monster in My Pocket. And these were kind of the competition to muscle, um, and muscle men. If you know what muscle men were, they were little pink figures. They looked like wrestlers. They were based on a Japanese uh, manga comic book. Um, and there's a whole video series. If you watch Toy Galaxy, the YouTube channel, he talks about uh, muscle men and monster in, your, monster in my pocket. Now, the funny thing about these, now some of these can be rare. And they're very, they can be collectible based on the color or the character. Some characters are really rare, and some colors of that character are really rare. So, like, the witch was easy for me to uh, look up, and there's a green version of her, and there's a blue version of her, and there's a purple version of her. Um, and the different colors really mean different values. Um, and these ones right here are probably not worth much. I could probably group them together and get 20 bucks out of them. But the cool story about these is the, um, they're called Monster in My Pocket. Now, if you know the history of Pokemon, Pokemon means Pocket Monster. Um, that is the short version of Pocket Monster. But Pokemon were, was never trademarked as Pocket Monster because of these toys. These already came out called Monster in My Pocket. And so they were worried about copyright infringement if they had something that where they came out and said Pocket Monster. So these are the original Pocket Monsters, not Pokemon, technically. So those are a lot of fun. Um, definitely these G.I. Joe is going to pay for everything. Uh, Pocket Fisherman, ironically, Pocket Monsters, Pocket Fisherman might pay for everything. But yeah, just whole, had a whole lot of fun, a lot of cool stuff. And uh, now i got to get started to listing this stuff because I didn't list anything yesterday. All right, uh, stand by for future videos. Um, recycling events are coming up soon. Actually, next weekend, I start doing recycling events. If you watch my past videos, you know that I get all these this free electronics from these recycling events, and I'll explain that more in future videos. But it looks like me and the owner of the recycling company want to kind of work together and do some higher and better made videos. So hopefully you'll see those soon. Thanks for watching.